Hello everyone, this is Al Red Sox Fan coming to you from Al Red Sox Fan YouTube channel and we're going to continue with our 1967 World Series replay. The what if Tony Caligniero and Sparky Lyle played against the Cardinals? Would there have been any difference? Well, in game one, spoiler alert, there was none. Cardinals would win that game 4-2. to two. Sound check went well. And, uh... We used a lot of our bullpen in that. It was a fun game. We we tried something different. We're going to go to this view now. I think I can play the game quicker. With this overhead view, I will read off what is going on. You should be able to see the dice roll. I've propped the camera up as high as I can. So this is game two. Cardinals have a one game to none lead. We're playing at Fenway Park. Cardinals took game one, four to two, behind the pitching of Bob Gibson. Let's get to the starting lineups. For the visiting St. Louis Cardinals, the National League champions, they won 101 games, only lost 60. Leading off, playing left field, Lou Brock, he homered in game one. Batting second, Kurt Flood, he's in center field. Roger Maris batting third in right field, batting fourth, the first baseman, Orlando Cepeda, the baby bull, batting fifth, Tim McCarver doing the catching, batting sixth, Mike Shannon, he's at third base, Julian Javier is batting seventh at second base, <clears throat> batting eighth, playing shortstop, Dahl Maxville, and batting ninth, doing the pitching, Dick Hughes. For the Boston Red Sox, who trail the series one game to none, looking to tie it up here, batting first, Jerry Adair, He's playing second base. Dalton Jones is batting second. He's at third. Carl Yastrzemski batting third in left field. Tony Caligniero batting fourth, playing right field. George the Boomer Scott batting fifth at first base. Reggie Smith, switch hitting center fielder, batting sixth. Rico Petroselli had three hits in game one. He's playing shortstop, batting seventh. And doing the catching, Elston Howard. On the mound, gentleman Jim Lomborg. And he is batting ninth. Now, in the original lineup, uh, Jose Tartable would lead off, and Adair would bat, I believe, seventh. But we took Tartable out because he was playing right field. We insert Caligniero, and that's the lineup we came up with. All righty, in the chat we have Fanomatic Hope Ball as well. And let's start off with the ball game. Uh, Jim Lomborg for the hometown Boston Red Sox in 1967 was 22-9 with a 3.16 earned run average. Lefties hit 225, righties 226. Dick Hughes, getting a game two start for the Cardinals, was 16-6 with a 267 earned run average. Lefties hit 212, righties hit below 200, 197. So Lonberg will deal... To Lou Brock, Lomborg's control factor, 10 through 55. If it's 10 through 55, we go off the Lomborg card. Here's the pitch, and it is a 95, so it's going to go off of the Lou Brock card. There will be an error check, and the green guy has jumped the shark already. <laughs> and that is a 39. A 39. So Brock, that's a triple for Lou Brock. So he starts off the game with a triple. Remember, in yesterday's game, he homered, and this time he triples to center field. So we'll go with an error check here. Any boot of the ball, he'll score. And that's a 34, no error on Reggie Smith. But a leadoff triple to center, and that goes into the triangle. And quickly getting the third base is Lou Brock. So Brock's at third. And here comes Kurt Flood. Flood reaches base safely. Zero through 45. Lombard picks up, picks up the sign from Elston Howard. Here's the pitch. And that is a 59... And that's not in Lonborg's range. So it's going to be off the Kurt Flood card. And that's a 63. A 63 will produce an out. There will be an error check. 
So 63, and that is a ground ball B to the shortstop. So Petroselli is the shortstop. Error check on Rico. And that is an A58. Uh, no, no error. Rico makes the play. Ground ball B. I believe the runner will score on that. And it should be a 1-0 lead for the Cardinals. Let's go to the handy-dandy ground ball art, out chart. Ground ball B. Runner at third. Man on third. Ground out to first, runners hold. Infield in, runners hold. Infield back, runners scored. Well, we're just playing normal. Ground ball B, they don't... Oh, yes, yes, because ground ball B, you get the lead runner. So, that's a 6-3 to three out. Brock holds at first. Nice play by Petroselli. So one out. Brock still at third. Here's Roger Maris. And let's move the helmets actually back here. Here's the pitch to Maris. And that is a 14. They'll go off the Lombard card. No error check. And that is an 87. The higher the number off the pitcher's card, that that's always good, I believe. So Maris on the 87 will send this ball. Sky high pop up in the infield. Let's make sure we have that right. A actually it's a 87. We don't look at the one. So 87. It's a pop up in the infield. I was correct on that. To first base. And that's out number two. No error check. So Maris is jammed as Lombard comes high and tight. And he pops out to Scott at first. So two outs. Cardinals endangered of stranding. Lou Brock at third. Here comes the baby bull, Orlando Cepeda. He reaches base safely. Zero through 41. Uh, 45, actually. Zero through 45. Lonborg's ready. He deals to Cepeda. And that is a 60. So we're going to go off the Cepeda card. There will be an error check. Can he drive in Brock? And that's a 28, and that will be a 1-0 lead for the Cardinals. The 28, righty-righty matchup. And that is a single to right in Tony Caligniero. Brock scores easily from third. The error check, no error on Caligniero. He throws the ball back in towards Adair. But the Cardinals jump, off, jump out to a 1-0 lead on the two-out RBI single by Orlando Cepeda. So Brock scores, and just like yesterday, the Cardinals have a 1-0 lead. And here comes Tim McCarver. Uh, Lomborg's stamina is 29 batters. Dick Hughes' stamina is 24. Left-handed catcher, McCarver digs in. Here's the wind-up and the pitch from gentleman Jim Lomborg, and that is a 0-7. We're going to go to the range play chart. Or as they call it, the special play chart. And that is a 93. 93. And a 93, we're not, is a special 93. Uh-oh, 93. Special result chart. We are on the special result chart. 93. Zero through nine, we did that. We're just going to re-roll that. We're not going to do any of that crazy stuff. So that's a 23. That's going to be a fielding rating. Range check. Let's see who they're... And a 62. And a 62 is the shortstop, Dahl Maxville. And Dahl Maxville's range... Is a 70. Uh, I'm sorry, Rico Petroselli. Rico Petroselli for the Red Sox. Rico Petroselli's range 
is an 85. Will he get to this ball? That is a 54. Rolled the wrong dice, but that's fine. 54. So 85 on a 54. That is an out. Petroselli backhands it and fires to first. And it's 20 through 59 is an out. Great play by Petroselli, and the side is retired. The Cardinals only get one. And once again, Brock starts it off. Yesterday it was a home run. Today a leadoff triple. one nothing. Cardinals. We go to the bottom of the first. Due up for the Red Sox. Jerry Adair, Dalton Jones, and Carly Yastrzemski. If anyone gets on, Tony Caligniero. They'll face Dick Hughes. Hughes, control factor 10 through 63. Stamina, 24 batters. Here's the pitch to Adair. Righty, righty matchup. And that is a 26 off the Dick Hughes card. And a 51. And a 51 is a ground ball to second. And Julian Javier throws out Adair. One down. Four to three. As Adair grounds out to his counterpart, Julian Javier. Dalton Jones comes up. Lefty. Here's the pitch to Jones from Hughes. And that is an 87. It'll go off the Dalton Jones card. And he reaches base safely. 0 through 43. And that is a 28. And there will be an error check, 28. So Dalton Jones inserted in the lineup because he hits righties at a 301 clip, 28. And that's a single to right field. And Roger Maris, and no error, Maris picks it up and throws it in. So a one-out single for Dalton Jones, tying run at first base. Now bring up Carl Yastrzemski. Yaz had a tough day in game one. Yaz reaches base safely. Zero through 53 against right-handers. Hughes picks up the sign from McCarver. He deals to Yastrzemski. And that is a 49. A 49. So that's going to be off the use card. I got excited there for a second, but we have to go off the use card. And that is an 81. And an 81 is an out. As that is a fly ball. Out to right field. And no error check off the pitcher's card. So Yastrzemski flies out to Maris. Dalton Jones goes back to first. Two down. Here comes Tony Caligniero. One swing in the back to put the Red Sox up 2-1. to one. Tony C. If we go off his card, reaches safely. Zero through 44 off the pitcher's card against a righty to reach base. Zero through 16. Ouch. You want to stay off the used card. Here's the pitch to Tony C from used. And that is an 86. So it's going to be off the Caligniero card. There will be an error check. Two outs. Dalton Jones will be off on contact. And that's an 83. And 83. As that ball is hit up in the air. And he pops it up. Towards first. And Orlando Cepeda. And Cepeda makes the catch. Side is retired. No error on Cepeda. So down go the Red Sox. We go to the top of the second. one nothing Cardinals. As Caligniero pops out to first. Due up for the Cardinals in the top of the second. Shannon, Javier, and Maxville. If anyone gets on the pitcher. A righty righty matchup. Mike Shannon, third baseman. He had an error in game one. Lonborg picks up the sign from Elston Howard. Here's the pitch. To Mike Shannon, that is a 36 off the Lombard card and a 76. And that will be an out. As that's a line shot right at the shortstop, Rico Petroselli. Rico has been a busy beaver at short. 
one down. Julian Javier steps to the plate. Right-handed batter. Here's the pitch from Lombard to Javier, and that's a 70. We're going to go off the Javier card, and if you're a Cardinals fan, Javier reaches base safely, 0 through 36 in a righty-righty matchup. Here's the pitch, and that is a 45. There will be an error check, 45. Actually, there will be no error check, swing and a miss, as Lombard picks up his first K. As he strikes out Julian Javier, Javier strikes out 37 through 50. And that was a 45. So Javier's going to go grab his seat. Two outs, base is empty for Dahl Maxville, the shortstop. Lombard kicks and fires to Maxville. That's a 72. We'll go off the Maxville card. He reaches base safely 0 through 33. Lombard fires in, and that's a 74. The inning will be over. We will have an error check, though. 74 off the Dahl Maxville card. Righty righty matchup. 74. As he strikes the ball well. That's a line shot out to Tony Caligniero. He's racing in. Will he make the catch? Yes, he does. Tony C makes the diving catch. And the top of the second is over. Great catch by Caligniero in right. Go to the bottom of the second. Two up for the Red Sox. Scott Smith and Rico Petroselli. Petroselli had three hits in game one. Bubba Husky is in the chat. Sorry about your Vols. I watched a little bit of that game. Unless they made a miraculous comeback, they got stomped by Roll Tide. Alrighty. Here comes the Boomer to face Dick Hughes. Here's the pitch to Scott. And that is a 12. We'll go off the Hughes card. And that is a 35, and that is a strikeout. The Boomer goes down swinging with no contact. So one down, Hughes picks up his first K. And here comes Reggie Smith, switch hitting center fielder. He'll be batting lefty off the right-handed throwing Hughes. Hughes peers in at McCarver. McCarver sets the target. Here's the pitch to Reggie Smith, and that is a 20, and that'll be off the Hughes card. So again... He's a lefty, though. And that's a 49. And that is a ground ball to short for out number two as Maxfield, Dahl Maxfield fields it and throws a Cepeda. So that goes 6-3. to three. No error check off the pitcher's card. As Bubba Husky says about his Vols, they played hard. They're just not any good. Well, as long as they played hard. I, I, that Alabama uh, team is scary. So two outs, base is empty. Here's Rico Petroselli. He had three hits in game one. Hoping to keep that hot streak up against Dick Hughes. Hughes rocks and fires to Petroselli. That is a 63. And Hughes will just stay in control. Again, his control factor is 10 through 63. So no error check. We go off the Hughes card. We need a 1 through 16, and it is an 82. The inning will be over as Petroselli sends this ball up in the air. And an 82 is a high pop-up. McCarver throws his mask off in foul territory, and he makes the catch. Side retired, so Petroselli pops out to McCarver. We go to the top of the third, one nothing, Cardinals. Due up for the Cardinals, Dick Hughes in the top of the order, Brock and Kurt Flood. Brock tripled his first time up and scored in a two-out single by Cepeda. And for the pitchers, we have a pitcher's hitter's card. The Cardinals and the Red Sox each have an individual hitter's card. And let me just tell you about the Cardinals' individual hitter's card. Um, very little contact. <laughs> They're excellent punters at 95. So... For a pitcher to get a base hit, zero or get on base safely, zero through twenty-two. Lombard deals to his counterpart Hughes, and that's a seventy-seven. So we will go off the pitcher's card. Not that it means anything, and that's an eighty-five. So that is an out. There will be an error check though. An eighty-five is a ball hit up in the air. Eighty-five as. Lombard jams his counterpart, pop-up 
towards Dalton Jones, and Dalton Jones is the worst fielder in the infield. Dalton Jones' defense at third is an 82. Will he make the catch? Double zero? Yes, he will. So Dalton Jones catches the pop-up. He struggled with it, but he makes the catch as the wind played a few tricks there. So one down, and as Dick Hughes pops out to Dalton Jones. Top of the order, Lou Brock. He tripled, scored the run on a two-out single by Cepeda. Let's see if he gets a little chin music from Lomborg after tripling to the triangle. Here's the pitch from Lomborg, and that's a 15. So we go off the Lomborg card, and that is a 68. That will be out number 268, ground ball, right back to Lomborg, and he throws to first for out number 2. So that goes 1-3 to three if you're scoring at home. Here's Kurt Flood. Flood grounded out to Petroselli. Two outs, no one on. Lomborg kicks and fires to Flood, and that is a 51. That still stays in the Lomborg control. And a 42, 51, and a 42. You have just struck out, Mr. Flood. Side is retired. Longboard throws the high fastball right by him. Swing and a miss. Longboard picks up his second K. We go to the bottom of third. Still one nothing. Cardinals. Due up for the 67 Red Sox. Elston Howard, Jim Longboard, top of the order. Jerry Adair. In the chat, we have Fanomatic and Bubba Husky. Here's Elston Howard. He came in. We we exhausted all of our position players in the 4-2 loss yesterday. So Elston Howard did get in game one. In reality, he didn't, but in our game, he did. Howard, well, he struggled with the bat against righties. .084. Against lefties, 303, but we're not facing a lefty. Here's the pitch from Hughes to Howard. And that is a 98. So we go off the Howard card. There will be an error check. 98. He reaches base safely. Not so good against righties. 1 through 16. We'd love to get a 16. We'll have a 1-1 one, one ball game. And that's a 36. And that is a 36. Swing and a miss. Dick Hughes picks up his second strikeout as Howard goes down via the K. Chased curveball out of the zone. And here comes gentleman Jim Lombard. To face his counterpart. Use deals quickly to Lombard. And that's a 77. We go off the Red Sox pitcher's card. And that's a 67. That's out number two. And a 67. Lombard hits the ball hard on the ground. To the third baseman. And Shannon throws him out. Five to three. So two outs. Top of the order. No one on. One nothing Cardinals. Here's Jerry Adair. Adair. In his first time up against Hughes. Grounded out to second. Hughes deals to Adair. And that is a 54. Hughes is in control. No error check here. None needed. 89 as Adair strikes this ball. 89. And he lifts it. Shallow left field going out is Shannon coming in is Brock Shannon calls him off makes the catch nice play by Mike Shannon the side is retired as Shannon catches it and shallow left top of the fourth one nothing Cardinals due up for the Cardinals Maris Cepeda who knocked in the run in the top of the first with a two out single and Tim McCarver. And again, Lomborg good for 29 batters. Maris digs in. Left-hander's batter's box. Lomborg picks up the sign from Howard. Here's the pitch to Mi Roger Maris. I almost called him Mickey Mantle. And that's a 38. So it goes off the Lomborg card against a left-handed hitter. And that's a four, uh, 24. 24, swing and a miss. A 22 would have been a home run, but it's a 24, so Maris goes down via the K. And that's Lonborg's third strikeout. I'm going to start circling these things. It's easier to pick up. So that's a third K for Lomborg, and now he'll face Orlando Cepeda, who singled with two outs to knock in flood. Thus, the Cardinals 1-0 lead. Here's the pitch to the baby bull. And that's a 34. 
off the Lombard card and a 28 against the righty 28. And that's a strikeout. Longborg mowing down Cardinals left and right. K number four, two down here in the top of the fourth. He wants that ball back quickly. And he'll now face Tim McCarver. McCarver grounded out to Petroselli. one nothing Cardinals. Two outs, top of the fourth, no one on. Howard sets the target. Here's the pitch to McCarver. And that's a 25. Again, Lomborg in control, and that is a 22 off a lefty, and that ball is bye-bye birdie as Tim McCarver sends that ball deep to right. Caligniera runs out of room, and it's 2 to nothing Cardinals. As McCarver was all over that fastball, a home run for McCarver, and it's 2 to nothing Cardinals. As he tried to Blow another fastball by a Cardinal hitter, and McCarver had none of it. 22 bye bye birdie, up, up, and away like a beautiful balloon. So Lomborg has to rebound. He will now face Mike Shannon, the third baseman. Shannon lined out to Petroselli. Righty, righty matchup. Lomborg kicks and fires to Shannon. That is a 36 off the Lomborg card. And that is a 92. The inning is over. As a 92 to a righty is a fly ball out to Caligniero. Caligniero continues to go back, but he catches it on the track. But the Cardinals get one more on the two-out homer by Tim McCarver. 2 nothing Cardinals. We go to the bottom of the fourth. Due up for the Red Sox. They need to get their bats going. Due up for the Sox. Dalton Jones, Carl Yastrzemski, and Tony Caligniero. To face Dick Hughes. Here's the pitch to Dalton Jones. Jones singled his first time up. And that is a 53. Hughes is in charge. And that is an 80. No error check off the pitcher's card. That is an 80. Lefty, Left-handed batter. An 80. And that's a pop-up sky high. In front of the plate. McCarver throws his mask up. He waits for the ball to come down. And he catches it. One down. So Dalton Jones pops out to McCarver. As I'm going to finally kill this freaking fly. And I got you, you little bastard. I've been waiting two days to kill that freaking fruit fly. And now I got him. Revenge is a dish best served cold. Alrighty. Mmm, tasty. So here comes Carl Yastrzemski. He flew out to Roger Maris in right. Here's the pitch to Yaz from Hughes, and that is a 70. So we're going to go off the Yastrzemski card, and Yaz, 1-0 through 53. He reaches base safely, and that's a 23. And Yastrzemski on the 23 will single to left, and Lou Brock, error check. It's got to be in the 9. Ooh, that's an 89. Let's see. Let me just double check. Lou Brock's defense is a 90. So Brock... Has a tough time with the ball, but does not make the error. So a one-out single for Yastrzemski. Tying run comes to the plate in Tony Caligniero. Caligniero uh, popped out to first in the first inning. As Hughes jammed him high and tight. Here's the pitch to Tony C. What will it be? We will see. That's a 42. That's not good news for Tony C. Off the Hughes card. So he needs a roll, being a right-handed batter, 0 through 16. And it is an 80. As Caligniero on an 80, right-handed batter, 80. Again is Jim. Sky-high pop-up. Once again, McCarver goes out in front of the plate, mask off. And he makes the catch for two down. So Hughes has been jamming Red Sox batters high and tight. As he got Dalton Jones to pop out. To McCarver and now Caligniero. So two outs. Yastrzemski at first will be off on contact. Here's George the Boomer Scott. He struck out the first time out. Here's the pitch to the Boomer. And that is a 24. Uses dealing. And that's a 24 and a 24. Normally a good roll, but not off the use card. Strike three. Side is retired. As 
the Boomer goes down for the second time via the K. We go to the top of the fifth, two to one. Uh, two to nothing. I wish it was two to one. Two to nothing. Cardinals do up for the 67 St. Louis Cardinals. Javier, Maxville, and Dick use the pitcher. Let's just do a quick count here after four of batters faced for Lomborg and Hughes. Lomborg has faced one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. So Gentleman Jim has faced fifteen through four. It's good for another fourteen before fatigue will set in. And Dick Hughes, who's good for twenty-four batters, has faced one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. He's good for ten more batters. So he's faced fourteen through four. All right, so Lomborg. We'll deal with the right-handed batting Julian Javier. He struck out his first time up. Lomborg has to keep it a two-run deficit here. Here's the pitch from Lomborg to Javier. And that is a 57. And that is just out of control. So we go to the Julian Javier card. And that's a 65. There will be an error check. This will be an out unless there's an error. 65. Ground ball C. So it's a slow ground ball. Charging in from second. Is a dare and bare hands it throws the first Scott scoops it out of the dirt for out number one. Great play by Jerry Adair. As Javier is out four to three. And here comes Dal Maxville. Flew out to Kelly Nero in the second. Lonborg picks up the sign from Howard. He kicks and fires. And that is a 26. 26 will be off the Lomborg card. And that is a 20. And that is... Oh, my Lord. That is a 20. And the light-hitting Dahl Maxville just lifts one over the green monster. And that ball is gone. Unbelievable. That shades of Bucky Dent, pre-Bucky Dent, as Dahl Maxville... Lifts the ball high up in the air. Yastrzemski goes back, goes back, looks up, and it just scrapes over the wall and is gone. So the weak hitting doll Maxville homers off Jim Lomborg. And that's a second home run, gentlemen. Jim has given up. And someone's going to get a ball planted in their back pretty soon. As Lomborg was not afraid to come high and tight or inside or plunk someone. But it's now 3 nothing Cardinals. So McCarver's homered, and now Max uh, Dahl Maxville, one out, no one on. Here's the pitcher, Dick Hughes, now spotted a three-run lead. Here's the pitch to Hughes, and that is a 34 off the Lomborg card. Righty-righty matchup, and that's a 31 swing and a miss, strike three. Lomborg picks up his fifth K, but he's down three runs. Two outs, top of the order to Lou Brock. Brock has tripled and scored in the first. And grounded back to Lomborg in the third. Howard sets the target. Here's the pitch to Brock. That is a 33. Lomborg again in charge. And that's a 69. That's out number three. And let's just see what happens on the 6-9. That's a line shot right back at Lomborg. He makes the catch in self-defense. Side is retired. But the Cardinals put another one up on the board by the home run by the weak-hitting shortstop, Dahl Maxville. Where have we heard that before, 1978? So he lines out. Go to the bottom of the fifth. Red Sox town 3 nothing here in Game 2 of the 67 World Series. They've already dropped Game 1, 4-2. Down 3 nothing. due up to face Hughes, Reggie Smith, Rico Petroselli, and Elston Howard. In the chat joining us, we have the original Grognard. That's a wonderful channel. Check them out. Also check out Fanomatic. He's working on his live streams. They're coming soon. And Retro Sports Network. As he says, we want a 20-inning game. No, we don't want a 20-inning game. No. <laughs> I want a Red Sox win. Check out that. Ron did a, a exhibition game between the... I want to say the Senators, but it's not the Senators. The Washington Nationals 
and the Boston Red Sox, a little precursor to the World Series. Mr. Ron Jeckett on Retro Sports Network will be playing games one and two tomorrow afternoon. Check that out, and let's see what he comes up with using Action PC in games one and two between the Red Sox and whoever wins tonight, as he bought the package for that off Action PC Sports. All right, here's the pitcher, Reggie Smith. He grounded out to Mr. Home Run at short, Dal Maxwell. And the pitch to Smith is a 73. So we're going to go off the Reggie Smith card. And he's a left -hand, uh, a right-handed pitcher. So he's facing the right-handed pitcher. And that's a 46. And that is a swing and a miss. My God, Dick Hughes is dealing. And that's strikeout number four for Hughes. As they're saying, get all aboard that Hughes train. Here comes Rico Petroselli. Petroselli had three hits in game one. First time up, he popped out to McCarver. Hughes kicks and fires to Petroselli. The green dice has jumped the shark. And, of course, we roll a one. So that's an 18 off the Dick Hughes card. So Petroselli needs a one through 16, and he won't get that. That's a 43. And no error check off the pitcher's card. A 43 is... A strikeout. Good gosh almighty. Another K here in the bottom of the fifth. Hughes now has five matching Lomborg. And can he get number six against Elston Howard? Howard only batted .084 against righties. Here's the pitch to Howard. And that's a 31 off the Hughes card. If Howard gets a 1 through 16, he or 0 through 16, he reaches safely. He will not. That is a 68. Inning will be over. No error check off the pitcher's card. 68. That's a line shot right at Dahl Maxville. And the side is retired. So the good news there was Howard hit it hard, unfortunately, right at Dahl Maxville. We go to the top of the sixth. And it's 3 nothing Cardinals. Dick Hughes is in command with a three-run lead. And let's see how many batters. So he had 14 after four. And he faced three. So now, he's faced 17. He's good for another 7. And gentlemen, Jim Lomborg back up on the hill. Might have to think pitch hitter soon. Lomborg will face Flood, Maris, and Cepeda. Cepeda knocked in the first run for the Cardinals with two outs. And Lou Brock standing at third. Kirk Flood's 0 for 2. He's grounded to short and struck out. Here's the pitch to Flood from Lomborg, and that is a 74 off the Kurt Flood card. He reaches base safely, 0 through 45, and that is a 57, and that is a hard-hit ball to Petroselli at short. He makes the backhand, fires to Scott. Again, Scott scoops it out of the dirt for out number 1. Kurt Flood grounds out 6-3. to three. And in homage of my good friend Ron Jucket, if you're scoring at home, 6-3. to three. But why are you scoring at home? Ba -boom -boom. Remember to check out Retro Sports Network. As Ron Jucket in the chat says, no ski trips for Jimmy. No, no ski trips. Here comes Roger Maris coming towards an end of his career. No longer part of the M&M &M boys, Maris and Mantle. Pretty much was a shell of himself when he got to St. Louis. 0 for 2. He's popped out to the first baseman, Scott, and struck out. Lomborg looks in, nods his head. Here's the pitch to Maris. And that is a 34 off the Lomborg card against lefties. He needs a 0 through 22, Maris. And he gets a 22! Roger Maris lifts this ball deep to right field. Kalegniero just turns and looks. And oh my lord, that is another home run off Jim Lomborg. Holy cow, in the words of the late great Phil Rizzuto. That's a third home run Lomborg's given up. And it's now four to nothing. As Caligniero took two steps and just stared. That was a moonshot. Maris turning back the hands of time to 1960 and 61. As he touches them all, 
to the sounds of silence here at Fenway Park. The Red Sox are on the verge of going down 2-0 in the 1967 World Series. So one out, 4 nothing Cardinals. They've matched their run total from Game 1. And here's Orlando Cepeda. He's singled in the first, knocking in Brock, and then he struck out. Will he get some chin music from Lomborg? Here's the pitch to Cepeda, and that's a 26. Lomborg is in charge. Righties reach 0 through 20. And that's a 21 swing and a miss. Oh, my Lord. As if that was a 20, that would have been another home run. Big swing by Cepeda, and he struck out for the second time. So two outs, 4 nothing Cardinals. Here comes Tim McCarver. He's homered off Lomborg. Lomborg gets that ball. He is agitated on that mound. He fires it in towards McCarver. That's a 79. So a little over anxious there. We go off the McCarver card. He reaches base safely against right-handed pitching. 0 through 48. And that's a 30. And that is a single to right field. And Tony Caligniero, Caligniero goes over to field the ball. And oh, nuts. That's a 91. And Tony sees defense. Is a 95, so he picks it up and throws it in safely. But the inning stays alive as McCarver picks up his second, and he's now two for three. Lomborg is struggling. And here comes Mike Shannon. He's 0 for 2. He's lined out to Petroselli and flown out to Caligniera. Cardinals up 4 0. McCarver's at first, two outs, looking to add more. Here's the pitch from Lomborg. And that's an 80. So we're going to go off the Shannon card. Shannon looking for his first hit to join this hit parade. He reaches base safely against right-handed pitching 0 through 34. And that's a 68. And mercifully, as long as there's no error, this inning is over. So 68. And that's a ground ball, a slow hit ground ball to the third baseman. Oh, nuts. Dalton Jones, the worst fielder. He comes charging in. And he will throw the ball away as we just rolled a 93. His defense at third is an 82. So McCarver advances to second as Scott quickly corrals the ball. But in two games, Dalton Jones has committed two errors at third. On the E5, the inning stays alive. 15. Through 4, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. You can only face five more batters between before fatigue sets in. As the Red Sox coming apart at the seams like a baseball. And here's Julian Javier. Javier's 0 for 2. He struck out and grounded out to Adair. McCarver at second. Shannon at first. Thanks to the error by Dalton Jones. And incensed Jim Lomborg on the mound. Here's the pitch to Julian Javier. And that's an 11. Please strike him out, Lomborg. Please, please. And that's an 87. The inning will be over. 87. Right-handed batter. 87. He hits the ball in the air. As that's a chin music. Lomborg really came in high and tight in foul territory. Scott makes the catch. And the inning is over. As Julian Javier goes 0 for 3. That was more of a defensive swing. And he pops out to Scott. But once again, the Cardinals put up a run. They have scored in the first, fourth, fifth, and now the sixth. They've hit three home runs off of Lomborg, and they now lead 4-0. We go to the bottom of the sixth. Due up is Lomborg. And let's just get a count here again. Lomborg down four. I'd like to get another inning out of him. We used a lot of our bullpen yesterday. Santiago only went two. All right, so he threw 15. I forgot to mark down what I said before, so we'll just have to do it this way. 15 through 4. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. He's good for five more, uh, four more batters. 29. So 25 through 6. Lomborg will stay in the game, down 4 nothing. 
Here's the pitch from Hughes to Lomborg. And that, of course, now we're going to go off the batter's card. 60. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Come on. 0 through 20. 0 through 20. 0 through 20. And it's a 30. God. Fudge knucker. And that is a swing and a miss. I saw the 0 and was hoping for a 2. So Lomborg goes down via the K. And that's uses 6 strikeout. Oh, it's down here. It's rock. So that's his sixth strikeout. He's now faced 18 batters. It's good for another six. Top of the order, Jerry Adair. Adair's old for two. And then Dalton Jones. Red Sox bats have to get going. Use works quickly to Jerry Adair. And that's a 33 off the use card. And that's a 19. A 19. Oh, my God. And that's a strikeout. He is so tough off righties. Had he been a lefty, why couldn't it have been Dalton Jones up? It would have been a home run. But that's a swing and a miss. Righties only reach base safely off of the Dick Hughes card, 0 through 16. So that's strikeout number 7. One more and he strikes out the side as Jerry Adair hits nothing but air. And goes back to grab some pine. Here comes Dalton Jones. Jones, single in the first, popped out to McCarver. His next at bat. Hughes kicks and fires at Dalton Jones. That is a 65. It will go off the Dalton Jones card. We need a big hit here. Dalton Jones, 0 through 43. And of course, we get an 83. An 83. As a ball hit up in the air, wave your hands like you just don't care. As once again, Hughes comes in high and tight, and this ball is popped up towards first in Orlando Cepeda. Here's the error check, and that is a nuts. Um, nine. So Cepeda makes the catch, and the side is retired as the Cardinals just continue to cruise on down the highway. As Dalton Jones pops out to Cepeda, we go to the top of the seventh. Four nothing Cardinals. Um, Lombard's good for four more batters. We kept him in to get through this inning. He will face the bottom of the order: Maxville, Hughes, and Lou Brock. We might go with a pinch hitter though. Hughes is just cruising along. Hughes. So 17 through 5, and he faced 3, that's only 20 through 6. And he's good for another, he's good for another 4. All right, Lombard, Maxville, 1 for 2. He lifted a ball over the left field wall, just scraped over. Lombard looking for some revenge. Here's the pitch to Dahl Maxville. And that is a 0-1, so that's one of those special adventure charts. And again, we're just playing fielding range. We're not doing injuries or any of that stuff. I should just really just go right to the fielding range, but we'll roll for ha-has. Usually it's hit 13, so it's a fielding range. Actually, it's a pitcher's chart, but there's no one on base, so it doesn't matter. So we're going to go fielding range, and that's a 64. And a 64 goes to Petroselli. He's been a busy beaver at shortstop, and he does not have stellar range at short. Rico Petroselli's range at short is 85, so we'll roll the dice. And that is a 69. And go to the chart, 85 range, and a 69, and that's a single. So the ball sneaks past Petroselli. And Dahl Maxfield picks up his second hit. To start off the top of the seventh. And here comes Dick Hughes. He'll be sacrificing. And he's an uh, all Cardinal bunters are 95. It doesn't matter if you're in or back or any of that. It's the sacrifice bunt's a sacrifice bunt. So let's just roll the die here. Oh boy! That's a 90. That's not going to be good. No matter if you're a 95. So that's a 90. A little lackadaisical on the sack bunt. 
Sacrifice bunting chart. He's a, they're a 95, and it's a 90, and that is pure poop. He pops out to the first baseman, and quickly able to get back is Maxville. So he pops up as Lomborg tried to behead him when he squared the bunt. Pops out to the boomer. Top of the order now. Lomborg can face two more batters here before fatigue sets in. It's Lou Brock. Brock tripled and scored in the first inning. Since then, he's grounded back to Lomborg and lined out to Lomborg. Here's the pitch from Lomborg to Brock. And that is a 55. Lomborg is in control against a left-handed hitter. Brock needs a 0 through 22. We've seen the 22 twice already from lefties. We don't want to see it a third time. Mercifully, we don't. That is a 39. Swing and a miss. Strike 3. Brock goes down via the K. Lomborg now has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 strikeouts. But he's given up 4 runs, 3 home runs. So 2 outs. Maxville at first. Here's Kurt Flood. He's 0 for 3. He's been a strikeout victim once. Elton Howard sets the target. Here's the pitch to Flood. And that is a 74 off the Flood card. And Flood needs a 0 through 45. He will get it. That's a 35. And that's a single to right. Caligniero comes charging in. And it's a 92. 92, Tony C's defense is a 95. It does not skip by him. He backhands it, throws it to the cutoff man. Advancing to second and holding is Dahl Maxville. And the inning stays alive as Flood singles to right. He picks up his first hit. And now we have reached fatigue. So now we have to go minus five. So Lomborg's control will give him one more batter is now 10 through 55. We'll give him one more batter. And here comes Roger Maris. And Maris has homered off of him as he crushed that ball to right. One for three, a home run, a strikeout, and he popped out to Scott. Here's the pitch to Maris from Lomborg. This will be his last batter. And it doesn't matter. That's a 74. He wouldn't have been in control anyway. So we go off the Maris card. Maris reaches safely 0 through 44. He gets a 26, so he's going to get another hit. A 26 is a single to center field. Two outs. Maxville's running ability with two outs. There's no modification. It just goes off the center fielder's arm. Reggie Smith is a minus 7. Maxville... Cepeda's up next, though, so we got to think this out. Maxville's speed is a 71, so that goes down to a 64. We're going to send him. 64% chance of scoring, and he scores easily, and it's 5 nothing Cardinals. The dice rolls a 0-7, so the throw is way offline. Maxville scores from second. And it's 5 nothing Cardinals on the RBI single by Roger Maris. He picks up another ribby. And holding at second is Flood as he chose not to advance to third. And here comes the baby bull. And now 10 through 45. Righty, righty matchup. One more batter for Lomborg. That's a 22. He's in control. And that is a 28. Oh, my God. Swing and a miss, at least. he. And that's how the side retires. He picks up one more strikeout, and he is done for the day. Lomborg has gone seven. And he's given up five runs, all of them earned. Three home runs. There will be a new pitcher in the game. So again, the Cardinals just, they're, they're, they're paper cutting you to death. They've scored a single run in the first, fourth, fifth, sixth, and now the seventh. And they lead 5 nothing. Do up for the Red Sox. Yastrzemski, Kaligniero, and Scott. If anyone gets on, Reggie Smith. Hughes can face four batters. He's in the game. Hughes has given up only one, two, 
He's only given up two hits. Dalton Jones in the first, and Yastrzemski in the fourth. He is cruising on down the highway, as we've said. You don't want spoiled pantalones, that's for sure, Mr. Ron Juckett from Retro Sports Network. All right, use. Deals to Yastrzemski. Here's the pitch, homeward bound, and that's a 76. It'll go off the Yastrzemski card. Yastrzemski against right-handed pitching. Reaches safely, 0 through 53. Come on, Yaz. That's a 4, 7. And that ball is gone. Yastrzemski crushes that ball over the green monster. And it's 5 to 1 now. And finally, the Red Sox fans have something to cheer about. As Yastrzemski homers to start off the bottom of the seventh. And it's 5-1. to one. They finally get to use. Bullpen action up for the Cardinals. McCarver goes out to have a word with Dick Hughes. It's only his third hit. But finally, the Red Sox come through. Yaz now 2-3. for three. Here comes Tony Caligniero. Hughes will stay in the game. He deals to Tony C. And that's a 34. So Hughes bears down 34. And right-handed batters need 0 through 16. And it's a 14! Tony C. launches this ball towards the triangle. Flood's not going to get there. It's going to rattle around. Caligniero racing around second on his way to third. Here's the throw. The relay not in time. A triple by Tony Caligniero. And here come the Red Sox. So Caligniero is standing at third. No outs. Striding the plate is George the Boomer Scott. He's 0 for 2. He struck out twice. Will they stick with Hughes? They will. They will. Bryles is ready. But they're going to stick with Hughes. He has struck out. Scott twice. Caligniero stands at third. Red Sox bats finally coming alive. Here's the pitch to the Boomer. From Hughes, it's a 32. It's off the Hughes card. Again, we need 0 through 16. And they're not going to get it this time. That is a 77. That's a line shot right at the second baseman for out number 2. No error check off the pitcher's card. So George the Boomer hit it hard, but right at Julian Javier. So one out. Caligniero is still standing at third. 5-1. The Red Sox finally break through in the bottom of the 7th. And here comes Reggie Smith. He's 0 for 2. He struck out once. Smith batting lefty. Reggie Smith against righties batted 234. If you go to a lefty, he batted 285. Pitching coach comes out. McCarver's on the mound with him. Cepeda. They're having a meeting. Nelson Bryles is a righty. Good for 13 batters. Hughes is still slightly better right now because he can go one more batter before fatigue sets in. Just double check that. 20 through 6. Yeah, and he's only faced 3. He's good for 24. He's going to stay in there for Reggie Smith. One out. Caligniero stands at third after tripling after Yastrzemski homered. Here's the pitch to Reggie Smith from Dick Hughes. And that is a 56. Hughes is in control. Zero, uh, 10 through 63. So 56 is in control. And that's a 25. Normally a good roll. And you know what that is? That is a strikeout. 21 through 33. Six, he strikes out the lefty, so he picks up another K. So two outs now, and Caligna are in danger of being stranded at third, and that's it. That's it for Mr. Hughes. I'm at the minus five now, and he'll be at 58 control factor. Really tough on righties, though. He's going to, well, you know what? McCarver says he's okay to go. Two outs. Here comes Rico Petroselli. Can he come through in the clutch? Had three hits in game one. And in game two, Rico is 0 for 2 with a strikeout. Can Hughes get him one more time? Into the breach goes Hughes. Here's the pitch to Rico Petroselli.
And that is a 73. So we'll go off the Petroselli card. Petroselli reaches safety against right-handed pitching 0 through 40. 38, 39, 40 is a two-run homer. And it's a 56. Hard hit ball. To the second baseman, Julian Javier. Error check on Javier. And that's a 93. Javier's defensive rating is a 92. And Javier boots the ball on the hard hit shot by Petroselli. And scoring from third is Tony Caligniero. It's now 5-2 to two Cardinals as Petroselli no RBI reaches on the E4. And Hughes just stares at his second baseman. Almost like Bob Gibson glare. And the inning continues to Elston Howard, but that's it for Dick Hughes. Hughes. Has given up two runs. He's responsible for Petroselli. At first, he went six and two-thirds. And here comes Nelson Bryles. So Nelson Bryles. Nelson Bryles. Would help if you picked up the right team, Al. There we go. As we had it set up. Here's Nelson Bryles. Bryles good for 13 batters. And he'll come in to get the try to get the final out here in the bottom of the seventh. So Nelson Bryles, right-handed pitcher. Takes that walk in from the bullpen here at Fenway. He's a righty. Stamina of 13 batters. Hold factor minus 10. Control 10 through 67. In 1967, he was 14 and 5 with 6 saves. He actually started 14 games while coming in relief 35 times. Tribes fans join us in the chat. Check out his channel for updates on the Fer on the Vita Blue 1971 Cy Young year. <laughs> Tribes fans says, good evening, Al. A shout out to you and some others in the chat for telling what the TARDIS stood for. Came up in trivia game on Wednesday. Cool. Alrighty. So two outs. Petroselli stands at first thanks to the error by Julian Javier. Caligniero scored on the error. Yastrzemski homer to lead off the bottom of the seventh. Caligniero tripled to the triangle and scored on the error by Julian Javier. So two outs. Petroselli's at first. Elston Howard who again does not hit righties. Howard will not hit. We'll go to our bench. And I think we're going to go to Mike Andrews. He had a pinch hit single for an RBI in game one. He hits righties at a 260 clip. Joe Foy hits lefties very well. So we're going to go Mike Andrews. Can he come through once again as a pinch hitter? And Mike Ryan will probably come in to catch. We'll see. It's either going to be Ryan or Gibson. We're going to have to have another. If Andrews gets on, we'll have a pinch hitter. We'll have a pinch hitter as Lomborg is not going to hit. So Mike Andrews singled in game one off the bench, knocking in a run. Knocking in the Red Sox first run, I do believe. Or was it the second? It had to be the second. No, it was the first because he pinched it in the second inning. As Santiago had been... Already in fatigue. All right. Mike Andrews against righties batted 275 with four home runs in 1967. He prepares to face Nelson Bryles, who just entered the game. Bryles picks up the sign from McCarver. McCarver sets the target. Here's the pitch to Mike Andrews. Bryles, um, 10 through 67 control factor. It's a 28. So it's going to go off the Bryles card. And a right-handed batter needs a 0 through 18. Come on, 18. That's a two-run shot. 
and it's not. That's out number three. That's a 77, and it's just academic. We need to know where it goes. So that ball's hit up in the air. Wave your hands like you just don't care. And on a 77, that's a fly ball out to Lou Brock in left. Inning over. No error check off the pitcher's card. So Mike Andrews. Came into bat for Howard. We have to do a little utility work here. Mike Andrews fails in his second pinch hitting. Right hander. He might stay in the. No. No, no, no. We might go double switch here. We're going to go double switch. So Andrews is out. Andrews is out. He was a pinch hitter. Flies out. What did I say flow it to? Left, right? Doesn't matter. He made it out. Flew it to left. Brock. Um, so Elston Howard's out. The pitcher will go there. Mike Ryan will go to the nine spot. So the pitcher's card goes in the eighth spot. Mike Ryan. Well, we might go with Gib Gibson. Mike Ryan. 198 off righties. Ugh. Gibson. 171. Well, pick your poison. Mike Ryan. Who's the better defensive catcher? <laughs> Minus 10 arm for Ryan. Gibby minus 10 arm, defense 99, rain 96. Though they're going to bring in the probably, they might bring in, Russ Gibson's going to come in to catch in case they bring in the lefty, and he batted 303 off lefties. So Russ Gibson will come in to catch. Do a little house cleaning here. Bear with me. I really do like this dice baseball game. And I wish I could do it with the spreadsheet, but I forget to move it, and it takes me way too long, as I'm probably going longer than I actually think I'm going. I think I'm going at a fairly good clip. but And I do enjoy this game. I, I, I played a bit offline, but this is something I've always wanted to do. Okay, so Gibson will come in to catch. And uh, I'm not going to write down his defensive rating, so I look him right here. Uh, 99 defense, 81 range, minus 10 arm. Okay, now we need a pitcher to come in for Lomborg. We're down. So the Red Sox get one back. We go to the top of the eighth. It's 5-1 Cardinals. As they're six outs away from taking a 2-0 lead. In reality, the Red Sox won game two, I believe, 5 nothing behind Lomborg, who went the distance. And I think we're going to go with do up McCarver, Shannon, and Julian Javier. Lyle's death on righties. Lefties hit 302 off of him. Stange. Stang. Stange. I never pronounced his name right. Well. We're going to bring in Sparky Lyle, who actually did play in the World Series. But again, it's a what if Caligniere and Lyle played. So Sparky Lyle will come in the game. And, oh my god, his hold factor is god-awful. That's a plus 10. Stamina, he's good for six batters. Control factor, 10 through 67. Sparky Lyle. Well, the what if so far has not been good. Looks like the Cardinals are going to go up 2-0. With Caligniero and Lyle on the team. And he's a left-handed thrower who actually does much better against righties. So here's Sparky Lyle. He's in the game, top of the eighth. And he's going to face McCarver. McCarver's two for three. He was two for three off Lombard. He homered and singled. Also grounded out to Petroselli. Top of the eighth. Lefty-lefty matchup. Control factor for Sparky Lyle, 10 through 67. He deals. 
to Tim McCarver. And, of course, it's a 92. We go off the McCarver card against a left-handed pitcher. McCarver needs a 0 through 42. And he gets a 74, so that will be an out. That's a line shot at the second baseman. Jerry Adair, will he make the leaping catch or an error? Adair's defense is a 91, and he makes the leaping catch. Nice play by Jerry Adair as he goes in the air to snag that ball. One down. Sparky Lyle and the Fenway Faithful breathe a sigh of relief. One out. Top of the eighth. 5-1 Cardinals. Here comes Mike Shannon. Shannon is 0 for 3. He did reach on Dalton Jones' second error of the World Series at third. Here's the pitch from Lyle to Shannon, and it's not with love. 32 off the Sparky Lyle card. Right-handers need a 0 through 18. And that is a 38. Swing and a miss. Strike 3. Go grab some pine, son. So 2 down. And now I'll face Julian Javier, who made an error. That allowed Caligniero to score the second run in the bottom of the seventh for the Red Sox. Here's the pitch to Javier from Lyle. And that is an 86. We go off the Julian Javier card. Left-handed pitcher column, though. And he reaches safely 0 through 43. And that's a 56, so he will be out. 56 is a hard-hit ball to George Scott. Oh, it's a 3. He's a righty. That's probably... I'm sorry. That's probably the... Third. No, it is it to the Boomer. Yep, hard hit ball to George Scott. Error check, 88. The Boomer's defense is 96. He backhands it, flips to Lyle, covering the bag. Side is retired. 1, 2, 3, go with the Cardinals. But they have a four-run lead as we go to the bottom of the eighth. 5-1 to one St. Louis. So that went 3-1. to one. I said 1-3, to three, sorry. 3-1. to one. Lyle does his J-O-B. He can face three more batters in the top of the ninth. And Bryles can face 13. He f Shit, when did he come in? Oh, he got the last third. Yeah, I got it. That's the only thing. I love, I actually have found the joy of doing this again. I got, th I got this game. I have Strat. I bought a, bought a ton of teams. I'll show everyone that probably later tonight with a video um, or a play a game. And I have All Star Baseball. So, and I gotta get back to playing that as I'm constantly in contact with Craig, trying to give him some ideas to tweak it just slightly. The game does play well. There's a couple of things I, me personally, I'd like to see done. I can do it myself. I'm working on that. But when I play next time, I will play with the way it's he has it. Because I haven't tweaked it the way I want so far. But that's a fun game. I like it. Um, all right. So he faced one. He's good for 12 more. As Andrews flew out to Brock. I forgot to cross it there. All right. Top, uh, bottom of the eighth. Adair, who made that great play in the top of the eighth. Jones and Yastrzemski who homered. So Bryles will deal to Jerry Adair. Here's the pitch to Jerry Adair, and that's an 11. Just not getting the rules today for the Red Sox. Off the Bryles card. Adair is a right-handed batter. We need a 0 through 18. And that's a 96. And a 96 is a deep, is a 96 is a fly ball out to right. No error check. As Maris is there and makes the check, the catch, excuse me, makes the catch. Off the pitcher's card, no error check. And here comes Dalton Jones. Jones has singled, popped out to the catcher, then popped out to Cepeda at first. Bryles deals to Dalton Jones, and that is a 13 again off the Bryles card, but he's a lefty. So a lefty reaches safely, slightly better, 0 through 22. No home runs, though, he gives up against left-handed batters. And it is a 12. So Dalton Jones on the 12 singles as he smashes his ball right back up the middle through the wickets of Bryles. And now we go error. Oh, no, it's off the pitcher's card. No error check. So Dalton Jones picks up his second hit of the game. So it's 5-1. to one. Yastrzemski homered. 
his last time up off Dick Hughes. Can Yaz do it again? Caligniro on deck. He tripled. Bryles looks in at McCarver. Gets the sign. Here's the pitch to the Triple Crown winner, Carl Yastrzemski. And that is a 72. So it will go off the Yastrzemski card. Yastrzemski against right-handed pitching. Reaches base safely 0-53. to Come on, 45-53. to And son of a gun, it's a 65. So that will be an out unless there's an error. And you know what? That will be a double play ball unless there's an error. As zero on a ground ball, A is a hard hit ball to second. Julian Javier, who has committed an error today, his defense is a 92. Come on, 93. And nope, he makes the play four to six to three. Side is retired. He makes a good play on that hard hit ball by Yastrzemski. So that is a double play. Four to six to three. We go to the top of the ninth. 5-1, to one, Cardinals. Sparky Lyle back out on the hill. Good for three more batters. He's good to face six. He went. He got them 1-2-3 in the top of the eighth. He'll face Maxville, the pitcher. So probably a pinch hitter. Uh, the pitcher is Nelson Bryles, though Bryles has faced one. came in here. One, he's only faced four, so he's good for another nine batters. Might stick with Bryles. Might not have to go to Horner. So Lyle will face Maxville, Dick Hughes, and Lou Brock. Maxville is two for three. He had a home run that just barely got over the left field wall. Then he singled. He's also flown out to Caligniero. Here's the pitch to Dahl Maxville from Sparky Lyle. And that is a 71, so we're going to go off the Maxville card as Lyle's control factor is 10 through 67. Just not getting the rolls for my beloved Red Sox. Maxville against the lefty reaches safely 0 through 44, and that's an 87, folks. That's an 87. Sorry I rolled way over there, but there we go. It's an 87. I wouldn't lie to you. If I would have lied, I would have wiped out three of those home runs. 87, that is an out. 87. The ball's hit up in the air. Again, Scott ranging into foul territory. Waiting for it to come down. Error check. Son of a... 91. And the Boomer is a pretty good defensive first baseman. I think he struggles with it, but he makes the catch up against the stands for out number one. The Boomer stuck with it. Anxious moments there for George C. Scott, the baseball player. So Bryles, 5-1. to one. They're up 4. He's going to hit for himself. Bryles is going to hit for himself. Here's the pitch from Lyle to Bry uh, uh Yeah, to Bryles. That's a 21 off the of Sparky Lyle card. Righty-lefty right, uh, righty matchup. So Lyle's pitcher card, you go off the right-handed hitter column. And that's a 52. And that is a ground ball. Hit to short. Petroselli's up with it. And he throws to first for out number two. Six to three. So Lyle can face one more batter between before fatigue sets in. He's looking for another one, two, three. And here's the top of the order. Lou Brock. Lou Brock tripled and scored in the first. Since then, he's been retired three times. Grounded out to Lomborg. Lined out to Lomborg. And they got struck out by Lomborg. Here's the pitch from Lyle to Brock. And that's a 50 off the Sparky Lyle card. Brock is a lefty. A lefty reaches base safely 0 through 26. And it's a 22. And that is a double off the left field wall. Inning stays alive as Brock just missed his second homer of the series. He homered first pitch he saw off Santiago in game one. So he doubles. He now has a triple and a double. And Sparky Lyle will now face Kurt Flood, and his fatigue factor sets in. He goes from 67 minus 5 to 62. Here's the pitch to Flood, and that is a 99. That wouldn't matter at all, so we go off the Flood card. Flood against a lefty, reaches base safely 0 through 45, and that's an 88. The inning will be over unless there's an error. 88, 
Ball is lifted in the air. 88. And floods a righty. 88. And that's a pop-up to Adair at second. And Jerry Adair's defensive rating is a 91. And it's a 52. He makes the catch. Side is retired. Strand at second is Lou Brock. So he pops out to Jerry Adair. Sparky Lyle goes two. Yeah, that'll be it for him if we tie it up. Two shutout innings for Sparky Lyle. We go to the bottom of the ninth. Last gas effort for the Red Sox. Caligniero, Scott, and Reggie Smith to face Nelson Bryles. Bryles has faced, came in in the eighth, uh, pitched a one batter in the in the bottom of the seventh. Got him out. Fly out to Andrews. One, two. So he's faced four. That means... Oh, nuts. I just blew one of the cards out. That's what sucks when you cut your cards out of regular paper and you have trouble breathing because of allergies and you breathe out of your mouth. And we just lost Tim McCarver. Lombard's on the bench saying, I wish you lost him sooner. We'll go find him in a second. All right. So Bryles for nine. You can face nine more batters. Nine. Let's go get Tim McCarver before we lose him all the way. Oh, there's Timmy. He's hanging on to the edge of the computer. Here, Timmy. I should have let you drop, but we don't want you to drop him. There we go. Yeah, I, uh, this is very reasonably priced, this game. If you, if you download the demo game, okay, and then you buy the PDFs, you can get seasons at $4 a pop. He doesn't have all the seasons, but he has a lot of them. So I bought, again, because I'm Al Red Sox fan, I go overboard. I'm like, oh, I want that season. I want this season. I want that <laughs> But All right. I think I've over gone over my budget on dice baseball games with Strat, dice base, this one, dice baseball, and all-star lineup. All right. Here's Caligniero. Come on, Tony C. Here's the pitch from Bryles to Caligniero. And that is an 88. We go off to Tony and a 2. I shouldn't have moved that. That's a 2. That's in case we know want know who the fielder is. Uh, Caligniero off a righty, reaches base safely. Zero through forty-four. Come on, thirty-eight through forty-four, and that is a twenty-three. Tony C on the twenty-three wraps a single to center. Return to center as he singles to center. So Caligniero picks up another hit. Caligneri singles, and that will bring up George the Boomer Scott. He has had a tough day. He struck out twice and hit the ball very hard at Julian Javier at second. Horner gets back up in the pen. The closer gets back up in the pen, the lefty, for the Cardinals. As he's getting ready, here comes Scott. Bryles takes a deep breath, arms down to his chest, the wind-up and the pitch to the boomer, and that is a 57 off the Bryles card. Again, we need one zero through 18, and it's a 22 swing and a miss. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second, Al. You looked at the wrong stupid thing here. No, you looked at the right stupid thing. You looked at the right stupid thing. Yeah, 18's a homer. We get a 22, and that is a strikeout. And we'll say swinging. So Scott K's for the third time. He gets a hat trick that you don't want, as Ron Juckett would say. You want the hockey hat trick, not that one. So one out. Caligniero's at first. And here comes Reggie Smith. And Reggie Smith is 0 for 3. He's ground out to short and struck out two times. Smith batting left-handed. Joe Foy will bat if they bring in Horner. Reggie Smith. Only 234 off righty. Digs in the left-hander's batter's box. Here's the pitch from Bryles to Reggie Smith. And that's a 53 again off the Bryles card. But against lefties to reach safely, it is 0 through 22. Now we need the 22, which would only result in a double. And we don't get it. That's a 46. That's a hard hit ball. Right back at Bryles. He knocks it down, picks it up, and throws. Oh, nuts. That's a double play. 
Bryles has it, throws as a ground ball A. One out, Kalignir is at first, ball game over. As Bryles goes to Maxville, back to Cepeda, 1-6-3. to six to three. The Cardinals take a 2-0 lead as they take game two, 5-1. to one. So double play, 1-6-3, to six to three. ball game over. The Red Sox, my beloved Red Sox, in this what if, are not doing really well. They're down 2-0. In reality, they would have won, they won this game 5-0 behind a complete game shutout by Jim Lomborg. So 5-1, the only bright spot. The home run, and then the tr home run by Yaz, the triple by Caligneri scored on the Petroselli era. 4-2, excuse me, 4-2. I marked that wrong. 5-2. 5-2, Al Red Sox fan, 5-2. So once again, the Red Sox score two, but this time they give up five. In game one, they gave up four. The winning pitcher is Dick Hughes. Bryles, I don't think he gets a save. He came in. They got the runs off of him. No. No, he does get the save. He came in after the two runs scored. So Hughes gets the win. Bryles to save. The losing pitcher is Jim Lomborg. He went seven. Gave up five runs. All of them earned. He gave up three home runs. He gave up three home runs. McCarver, Maxville, and Maris. Yastrzemski homered for the Red Sox. So the Red Sox go down 2-0 as they lose game two, 5-2. Two. Let's quickly go to the chat. And I think we went on a pretty good clip. A min an hour 27 for the game, as Ron Jackett says, good game, and he says the pace is good. Yeah, I and again, I want to end this because I usually, these go long, and, and we I'll talk later. But I tried all kinds of things. I don't have the camera set up like some of the other dice guys do. I'm Again, when, and when I can do it, I will. It's not high on my list. I call the game. I think I do a good job of telling you what's going on. I'm not cheating, obviously. If I was, the Red Sox would be up two games and none. So, and I might go back to the Excel spreadsheet. I just don't do it quick enough. And I got card and dice not to look at the computer. <laughs> and I found myself going to the computer more than I do a PC game. <laughs> I did like when I was putting pictures in, but I don't know. Anyway, I like this. How do you, a little, how do you guys like this um, setup? I know it's tough to see. I think you can see the dice rolls, though. As the original Grognarts is time... And relative dimension in space. <laughs> so, all right. I want to say thank you to Retro Sports Network. Check out that great Retro Sports channel. Tribes fan, check him out. He's doing the Vita Blue 1971 Cy Young replay, which he gives you every month updates. They're very good. Original Grognard for Military Strategy Channel. He's also playing. Um, he's also playing the new Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is like Greek. Uh, Spartans, it's a lot. It's really fun. Check them out. Phantomatic, thank you very much. He'll be streaming soon. He's been practicing. And Bubba Husky, thank you very much, Jim. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, can you get the overhead cam? That's what I'm going to work on. Right now I have the PC cam, and I put it as high as I can, and this is the best I can do. So I hope everyone enjoyed it. It was fun calling it. We did it. The game ended, what was it, 121? Uh, I'm gonna, you know, and, and the stream will be about an hour and a half. I think I can do it a little fast. I don't want to do it too fast, but this, I can live with this. Two hours, two hours, 15 minutes, I can't live with. I mean, I can. I still enjoy it, but, yeah, that's what we're going to be working on next, overhead camera. But, again, I put out a lot of money on the uh, of, of the budget on card and dice baseball. I went way over, so, and the tax bill for the house is coming up. So, we're just going to have to not pay, you know. I need to get a uh, camera phone or something. So, uh, All right. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Greatly appreciate your time. I'll be back in a little bit. Health and happiness. Remember to check out Friends of the Channel. Uh, God bless. Watch out for the curveball in the dirt. You know what's coming, folks. Peace. Go Red 